I'm Kaylee, and this is my reading update for days 20 through 26 of the 30 Books in 30 Days Readathon. So I've gotten a little bit behind, like a lot behind. <laughs> I am kind of, I'm just going to have to make some decisions here because it's gotten to the point where I'm really behind. So I've actually decided that I'm going to cut out some of my planned reading because there's just no way that I can get to all of it. And there's only a few days left in September. I'm starting to feel a little bit of reading burnout where I just don't feel like I have the mental energy to tackle some of these larger books that I had set for myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just count some of these short stories that I've been reading as their own separate thing instead of counting them in a collection like I had originally intended to do. So a few of these short stories I'm going to count separately and then that will take the place of a few of the novels that I've decided not to read for September. I will read them later. So I've been reading a lot of Agatha Christie. I have a whole collection of Agatha Christie short stories that I just finished. And I've been reading some of the plays and counting Agatha Christie's plays as a separate book for each one, even though in my edition, they're actually in a collection of plays. And it's a lot of Agatha Christie for just one month. Um, Agatha Christie was my challenge to read 10 books by the same author. And you can get sort of burnt out on just the same type of story and the same kind of author. And I love Agatha Christie and I've been enjoying everything that I've read from her this month. But it's just kind of like, ah, oh, another murder mystery. <laughs> so I've decided to cut out Murder on the Links. I'll probably read that later on, maybe in November or December this year. And I've decided to cut out At Bertram's Hotel. So I'm just going to save those for some cozy winter reading later on this year or maybe the beginning of next year. I'm also cutting out one of the longer Kipling short stories that I had set for myself to read. I'm not going to read On Greenhow Hill. And um, another Kipling short story that I was going to read was Blackjack. So uh, Kipling is another one where I've been reading a lot of Kipling and I just kind of feel like I need a little Kipling break. <laughs> I think I am still going to try to read um, the Kipling poetry that I had set for myself to read though. So I'm going to keep reading one Kipling poem every day and I feel like that's plenty of Kipling. <laughs> I don't need the short stories on top of all the rest of it. All right, so those are the things that I've decided not to read to sort of help me get finally caught up. Now let's get to the things that I actually have been reading. So I read the Mark Twain short story, The Man That Corrupted Hadleyburg. This is all about a man who leaves this big sack of gold in this village or town. And he uh, is trusting the honest character of the people in the town to make sure that the gold gets to the right person. But his real aim is that he wants to prove that everyone in this town is actually dishonest. I didn't really enjoy this. Uh, it seemed like there were a couple of plot holes and it was just sort of odd. And there were things that were never explained, like why is this guy trying to prove that everyone in Hadleyburg is you know, corruptible and dishonest. Like that was never explained. What was his motivation there? He just plunked down a whole sack of gold and why? <laughs> ah, hmm, we don't know. It was just sort of underwhelming. I also read Cousin Phyllis by Elizabeth Gaskell. I was so pleasantly surprised with this story. It's kind of a longer short story. It's more like a, a, a novella really, kind of a, a short novella, I guess. This is about a young man who is working for a railroad engineer and he goes to visit these distant like second and third cousins on his mother's side and he meets his cousin Phyllis. He becomes very close with his relations and they invite him to stay. He visits them for the weekend and just kind of falls into this family life with these people. And eventually he brings his boss, the engineer, to come and meet them and drama ensues. I really loved that while there is some tragedy and some heartbreak in there, it did have a very hopeful ending. And I really, really appreciated that. So many of the Elizabeth Gaskell short stories that are in this short story collection have been really, really depressing and like people die and all this stuff. 
So I was like, I, I can't stand it if these characters are going to die. I can't handle it because I got really, really attached to this lovely family and their, their peaceful farm life. And it was just so lovely. And then, of course, tragedy strikes and everything. And I was like, no, I cannot handle this. If these people die, I am going to protest. But there was a happy, hopeful ending. And so I was satisfied and happy. <laughs> Elizabeth Gaskell just has this way of making you so attached to her characters. There's just this emotional pull there that is fantastic. Of course, I have been reading more and more from the Welsh legendary tales and enjoying them so much. I think I'm actually going to be kind of sad once I get to the end of this book because it's like, oh, no more fairy tales, but I've been enjoying them. It's like every day I get this little refreshing, imaginative, fun little story. It has been such a delight to read one or two of these every day. And of course, I've been reading some more from Lord Byron's poetry. There are several excerpts from different cantos of the Don Juan poem, quite an epic poem. And I've been enjoying it pretty well. Um, some of the rhymes are just like, okay, that doesn't really rhyme, but sure, whatever. <laughs> so sometimes the, um, the execution is maybe not super the best. <laughs> and then he tends to go on these long rabbit trails that it's like, would you just stick to the subject of your poem here, please? Because you're going off on this other tangent and I'm just like, ah. And that's just the excerpts. That's not even the entire thing. Imagine the tangents that he goes on that they probably cut out for this edition. <laughs> but it's been pretty good, pretty enjoyable, um, just fun to read. I also read Heidi's Children by Charles Triton. This author wrote a couple of sequels to Heidi. So he kind of took the original story from Johanna Spirey and then just made his own thing and uh, continued the story. So the second book was Heidi Grows Up and I didn't even read that one. I don't have it. I just, whatever, I just skipped it. But apparently in that one, Heidi goes to school and she makes some friends and then she and Peter get married. So a little bit of spoilers there. She marries Peter. I don't think that's really spoilers because like that was coming from the beginning. Like even when they were children, it was Heidi and Peter, you know? So <laughs> I think it's kind of obvious they got married. So now at the beginning of Heidi's children, Heidi is expecting her first baby. But the school teacher who boards with Heidi and Peter asks if her little sister can come and stay with them and attend school in Dorfley or Delphi or whatever the, um, the name is of the little, little village in the mountains. So little Marta, the little sister, comes to live with them. And she was really, really unhappy at her home with her parents and um, like at her old school or whatever. And so Marta just starts to blossom under Heidi's affection and love. However, Marta and Heidi's grandfather do not appear to get along in the beginning. So there's some fun drama with that as well. I didn't particularly love this book. It just doesn't have that same kind of charm the way that Johanna Spirey's original story did. But um, these sequels by a different author, it just wasn't the same. Not that the writing was particularly bad or that the story was awful or anything, like it was fine. The characters were good and the plot was interesting and the writing was great writing, but it just didn't capture me. I just, I never got like swept away in the story at any point. I think I ended up giving this one three stars. Like, it's fine. If you super love Heidi and you're just like a massive Heidi fan, then I think you would enjoy these sequels. It was fine. It was okay. I also read another Mark Twain short story, really more of a short novella, The Mysterious Stranger. This story, you guys, I did not enjoy at all. This was awful. This was just so awful. So this is set kind of in the Middle Ages and they believe in uh, witches and ghosts and everything. And there are like Inquisition stuff happening or something and witch burnings. So these three young men meet a stranger on the road and the stranger apparently has supernatural powers and can do magic and just charms them and fascinates them with all of his interesting powers. Well, then they ask him who he is and he says, I'm an angel. And they ask, what's your name? And he says, my name is Satan. Okay then, <laughs> alrighty. So basically they meet the devil 
and they form a friendship with him. Not the best idea, guys, really. And they ask him for favors and he helps their neighbors, but it always ends up going wrong. And several people are like tortured and burned at the stake. And one guy drowns and another guy goes insane, like loses his mind. So all their family and their neighbors are suffering basically because of these young men and their friendship with Satan. So it's just really disturbing to read about. It was just horrible. And then the whole ending, I mean, this isn't really spoilers, but the whole ending is that um, there really isn't an ending. <laughs> there really, it doesn't really end. You don't really find out what happens at the end. There's just this long rambling philosophical spiritual discussion thing. And one of the young men comes to the realization that there is no reality. There is no God, no Satan, no heaven, no hell, no earth. You don't have a body. You are just a thought, like suspended in space or something. So there is no life. There is no death. There's just like an existence as a thought. Okay, <laughs> what? And that's the end of the story. He realizes that nothing is real, not even himself. The end. And you never really find out like what happens to the village, what happens to his family and the people and like, what? <sighs> it was just terrible. The plot was awful. The writing was awful. The characters were awful. The violence was graphic and disturbing. And wow, this is just the most horrendous thing I think I've ever read. Huh. <sighs> Zero stars. <laughs> Negative five stars. <laughs> oh, really, don't read this. It's just the worst. I also read the Agatha Christie short story, The Problem at Sea. It seems like all of these Agatha Christie short stories, I remember watching the TV show with David Suchet, and so I already know who done it. That is the difficulty when you've already watched the TV show. But it is interesting to see how the short story differed from the TV show and, and everything. So it was still really enjoyable to read, even though I already knew the ending. This is a Poirot mystery, and Poirot is on a ship on his way to Alexandria, Egypt. And one of the passengers is murdered. I really love that this short story goes into deep character analysis of like the personalities of the different passengers on board and everything. And there are these little tidbits, little clues and red herrings that are sprinkled throughout the dialogue. And of course, Poirot has to figure out the truth. The one thing I didn't like was the ending, no spoilers or anything, but Poirot uses like this shock tactic to try to shock the murderer into confessing. And I felt like it was just overly dramatic. I know that this is a thing that a lot of detectives use in, you know, detective stories. They try to kind of shock people into revealing something. But in this case, with like these people and this atmosphere, I think it would have just been better if he had just turned it over to the authorities and done things in a little bit more dignified way. But it felt like he was just being overly dramatic and the results I felt like were not good. So that was my own little quibble with that. And the TV show, he does use this shock factor, but the results are slightly different. And so I felt like the TV show actually did it better <laughs> because it, it didn't feel quite so objectionable um, the way that the TV show did it. And that's pretty much it. I'm a little bit behind with my reading, but I think that I've redone my expectations <laughs> and I'm making it work. I'm still reading plenty. I'm still reading like a hundred short stories and 20 novels or something like that. It's still plenty to satisfy my expectations and my goals for 30 books in 30 days. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know how is your reading going so far for September? Are you like me where you are scrambling to catch up these last few days of September? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.